Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. 1,400 tourism workers resume employment in the first phase of St. Lucia's economy reopening. The Ministry of Education to replace the common entrance examinations and protecting the creative industry from the ravage of COVID-19. The phased reopening of St. Lucia's lead economic sector has seen the return of 1,400 workers and the training of hundreds more in the informal sector. Communications officer in the office of the Prime Minister, Daniel Dubois, reports. The government of St. Lucia welcomes the return of over 1,000 employees in the hospitality sector as commercial flights into the country commenced last week. A total of seven hotels have been approved to open under the protocols outlined by the Department of Health and Wellness and the Ministry of Tourism. Minister of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting Honorable Dominic Fede at Monday's press briefing noted a very successful first few days of the phased reopening of the tourism sector and the high level of compliance from the majority of nationals and tourists upon arrival. The tourism minister highlighted the return of persons to work and reinforced the government's commitment to public health and safety. There are 1,200 individuals um, who have returned to work from the five hotels that are operational, um, two of them in the north and three of them in uh, Sufre. Um, we've had some 400 um, visitors so far, 134 returning nationals and uh, some 143 passengers in transit, most of them going to um, the Grenadines Islands coming through St. Lucia. I want to assure the press this morning that um, we're doing everything possible to ensure that we keep the people of St. Lucia safe. Our main priority as a government is to ensure that the safety of the people of St. Lucia are intact and that we do everything possible to make sure that that is controlled and that is achieved. Minister for Physical Planning and Parliamentary Representative for Sufre for Sijak, Honorable Herod Stanislas, was delighted to see many of his constituents return to work and is looking forward to the second and third phases where local sites and attractions can open. I welcome the reopening of those hotels in Sufre, um, Sugar Beach, Stonefield, Ladera, and I know Anshasni Jade Mountain are making preparations for reopening by sometime next week. This is very welcoming news for the people of Sufre for Sejak. As you know, those resorts employ over 1,200 um, people, and Sufre has been devastated by COVID for the past couple of weeks, couple of months. So it is very, very um, pleasing for the reopening of those resorts. People are very happy to be back at work. I know at this moment they cannot um, bring in the entire complement of staff, but um, gradually with occupancy um, going up, they will be able to employ, if not 100%, but almost 80 to 90% of the staff. So that is very good news for Sofra for Sejac. I also look forward to the second and third phase of the reopening of the sector, where we will be able to open the, the sites and attractions in Sufre. We know that Sufre is the mecca of tourism, and we have some of the most beautiful sites for our visitors, especially the Sulphur Springs, the Groupiton, the Diamond Falls, um, Ted Paul Nature Trail, and so on. Um, so for the past couple of weeks, months, it's been very tough in Sufre, but I'm very hopeful, very optimistic that um, there is confidence in the industry, in the sector, and Sufre will get back on its feet again. The parliamentary representative for Sufre, which is normally the mecca of tourism activity, went on to state that there is still a level of caution and called upon constituents to exercise patience as it will still take some time for the industry to bounce back to its previous capacity. Tourism is something that filters all the way down in the constituency and therefore it will significantly and positively impact small businesses in Sufre. So I'm asking everybody to, to be happy, to, to bear patience, to work with the authorities to put in the, the necessary protocols and measures in place, um, especially the staff of those resorts and small businesses. Practice the social distancing, um, wear your masks, um, use your hand sanitizers, um, protect your, yourself and your families as well. The government of St. Lucia has from the inception of the COVID-19 pandemic, delicately and strategically managed the health and economic challenges. 
so far wonderful. Um, people are very happy. Um, people have been very anxious for the reopening. I mean, many, many people depend on tourism, the water taxi operators, um, the taxi drivers, the tour guides, the small um, restaurants, the bars. I mean, the entire Sufre constituency depends on tourism. And I'm very, very pleased with that reopening. And I want to commend the owners and managers of those resorts for the confidence in the sector and also in the people of Sufre to, to get the hotels reopened. The balanced move to reopen the travel sector ensures that health and safety is paramount while also allowing citizens to make a living and support their families. Reporting for the Office of the Prime Minister, I am Danielle Dubois. The Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development is preparing to replace the common entrance examinations following years of complaints about the efficiency and fairness of the primary school exit test. Recognizing the shortfalls of the common entrance examination, the Department of Education is pursuing assessments which will allow for data collection to make appropriate decisions, ensuring student success. It is for this reason that the department is looking to adopt the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA. This assessment provides the teachers with a certain level of autonomy, enabling teachers to test the students within the classroom setting during the given school year through projects, book reviews and quizzes. The students' results will contribute to their final CPEA score. There is also an external component of the CPEA, which is an exam administered by the Caribbean Examinations Council and consists of multiple choice questions. Department of Education's Deputy Chief Education Officer with responsibility for instruction, Dawson Raghunanan, highlighted the benefits of the CPEA. I think it gives a more holistic picture in terms of the abilities of that child. A child, for example, who, who did the common entrance and they were sick on that day. For some reason, the child wasn't feeling too well. The child would get a particular score. That may not be reflective of his or her ability. But this um, CPA, it allows for that kind of interaction. It also allows for interaction um, amongst, you have the teachers, you have the students. It also brings in the whole um, parents. It also brings in parents, so parents can also play a role in terms of helping to develop those skills because it's about skill development, and that is what we're moving towards. Um, there are many countries now that have moved to the CPA in the Caribbean. The other thing about it is it allows um, for portability when it comes to scores. So a child is moving from one island to the other. There is no need for that child to go in and do another examination because the CPEA is a standardized test throughout the entire region. The CPEA ensures that students have critical literacies required when moving from primary school to secondary school and for life in general. Teachers are encouraged to provide in-depth feedback to students, enabling them to perform even better in subsequent assessments. The assessment is done over time, varying vastly from the common entrance examinations, which is done in one sitting. CPEA's continuous assessment component allows for students to demonstrate over time the critical skills that they would have developed throughout the program. Deputy Chief Education Officer Ragunanan says teachers are currently being trained to undertake the CPEA. We have recognized the need for training for our teachers for the CPEA and even now it, is, it started from the 6th of July where we had training for that first week for all teachers from Districts 1 through to District 4. This week, we are having training for Districts 5 through to District 8. And so, again, we are preparing our teachers. We are preparing them. And also, that training is being done with teachers from Grades 4 through Grade 6. The implementation of that is going to actually start in September. The date is September 2020. And we're going to be starting with the Grade 5s. The children have a period of two years to develop those skills. So it means that um, the students who are moving into grade five would actually begin um, preparing for the CPA. And it means that the children who are actually going to grade six, they would be doing common entrance for the final time. Students will be tested on four literacy areas, including mathematics, social studies, English, and science. And sensitization continues as the education sector forges ahead with transition from common entrance to the Caribbean primary exit assessment. More from Anisia Antoine. 
Several countries in the Caribbean, including St. Lucia, are embarking upon the process of retiring the common entrance examination and implementing a modified and enhanced version, the Caribbean Primary Exit Assessment, CPEA. The CPEA, introduced by CXE in 2012, aims to improve the quality of education in primary schools and have more students entering secondary school with the literacies needed for them to benefit fully from secondary school education. Education Officer of Testing and Evaluation at the Ministry of Education, Patterson Abraham, elaborated on the measures being taken in the preparatory process. At present, we are undergoing training with our primary school teachers from grades four to six and that would that is actually two weeks training the first week we covered teachers from the northern district districts one to four and the second week we are covering teachers from districts five to eight in this training we are going we are giving teachers the exposure to what the CPA program actually entails. Abraham also explained that the CPEA will be implemented in September, beginning with grade 5 students, and will consist of both an internal and external component. The internal component will include peer assessments, teacher-made tests, practice skills, book reports, and projects. It, it is basically broken down into two parts. The internal component that would be what we usually call the SBA component, and we have the external component of the assessment. The internal component, we have several parts that um, comprise the internal component. These make up the book report, so students are expected to um, choose a book of their own choice. However, for this book, they will be giving us um, certain details. So it's not just reading a book just for reading sake, but they will be providing information such as the author of the book. They um, give the summary of the book, they, uh, the characters in the book, um, what, the, what, what really jumped out um, to them when they, when they read um, the book. The education officer explained that under the CPEA, the students will be continuously assessed for the duration of the project component. Projects have been used in schools before, but many times we use it as just a product assessment, meaning that a child is given a, pro a project and all we are, um, we are interested in getting from this project is the end mark. However, with, our, with this type of assessment, we are focusing on the process while the students go through um, the project development. We are also assessing them throughout the process. So um, it, it engages both process assessment and product assessment. The internal component of the CPEA contributes to 40% of the overall mark, whilst the external component, a test given by the Caribbean Examination Council, will contribute 60% of the overall mark at the end of the program. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Anton reporting. The Income Support Program announced by Prime Minister the Honourable Alan Chastney is set for rollout. The program will benefit thousands of inclusions in the informal sector, including those involved in the creative industries. 24 million EC dollars has been made available to assist during this time of job loss due to COVID-19. Lisa Joseph reports on the successes the sector realized in 2019 and the efforts aimed at protecting those gains. As the nation reels from the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney is determined not to have the gains of 2019 eroded, particularly in the creative sector. During the 2020-2021 budget address, he outlined government's support to the development of the sector. Recommissioning of the St. Lucia's cultural map. Establishment of the goodwill and brand ambassador program. Support for the development of music industry that is focused on increasing awareness of St. Lucia music and en enhancing its export potential. Access to small grants programs. 
facilitation of export market opportunities. Amendment of the Fiscal Incentives Act to provide for service sectors including the creative industries. The rebranding of the Senusha Jazz Festival that led to the creation of the Senusha Summer Festivals has firmly placed national talent on the world stage, with the local acts standing alongside international greats in the genre of jazz and soul. Most importantly, though, the indigenous festivals of Creole Heritage Month and Carnival have been given greater prominence. Government's commitment to St. Lucia's arts and culture was further demonstrated with a $3 million investment in Carnival. This resulted in increased participation from creators and revelers. The unprecedented cash injection led to an overall improvement in the Carnival product, and when the curtains came down, July 2019 recorded the highest number of visitor arrivals at 42,773, an increase of 13% over 2018. The Caribbean tourism market also recorded a 6% growth for the summer period, attributable to Senusha Carnival. That is the first time in the history of our country that what is considered the traditional low period, that it has surpassed a winter month, or all winter months, Mr. Speaker, ever in history and also for the year of 2019. And so, Mr. Speaker, what it does is that it shows that the investment and the policy shift of this government to move away from overinvestment in the Jazz Festival and to focus on our carnival, Mr. Speaker, has yielded significant benefits and it has highlighted and showcased our culture, our indigenous culture, carnival, Mr. Speaker, as the biggest festival in St. Lucia. The creation of a national cultural policy, as announced in the budget by Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney, is expected to build on the foundation already set. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reports in. And this is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur Madame le Parti Marocain de responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale PIA NTN Capositeur Nouvelle en Creole. Presidente Primus Hutchinson. A info pour continuer ou renforcer protocole pour abattre maladie corona, ministre de santé te tient une discussion récemment et puis chauffeur l'auto passager. Ce chauffeur l'auto là te trouvé gide à façon pour réduire à sous possibilité que yo et eh bien les passagers pas trouver maladie corona. Chef officier des affaires santé le environnement par Karagnanan causé puis ses chauffeurs concerné ces divers protocoles qui sont posés pratiquer à bord ces autos là. Selon Ragnanan, ces protocoles là pas juste ça hier mais yo importe quand même. Ragnanan dit que ni les chauffeurs et les passagers aussi si posé porter masque à souffler jayo pendant yo à bord ces l'auto L'autre sac qui est important, c'est pour service sanitizer, pour la main, et le chef officier a dit aussi, la supposée ni assez sanitizer, avec la barre de l'auto, ça là. Il est nécessaire aussi pour continuer à tenir distance sociale à bord de l'auto, à bord de l'auto passager. Selon la grande, il y a quoi il est important pour l'année à cette distance entre les passagers et aussi pour chauffeur toujours nettoyer et aussi purifier à dire dans cette auto sala. Chef officier Ragnan a déclaré que la décision de être engagé et que cette transportation présentement qu'à garder en possibilité les mots passagers que ça a bon en auto. Discussion car il continue parce que des partis a pas arrivé à d'ailleurs agrément 
qui met façon ça peut fait Ragnan dit que ministère concerné de santé publique là et l'autre affaire de santé et qui nécessaire pour public là suivre c'est wèg ça là malgré les individus par des peni plan pour l'autre arrangement pour cette main c'est un seulement 10 passagers qui permet de voyager à sur l'auto ministre des affaires développement économique on va gay joseph en réponse pour business I tell BP ou à vieux fort. Car quoi qui c'est façon que ces business là te qu'à conduire avant pas sustainable à présent. On a Guy Joseph te présent à cérémonie pour te officiellement ouvert business I tell BP ou à ses plus bonnes assemblées là. Habitation les établissements business en vieux fort. Ministre a déclaré qui en temps avant pour M. John Compton te établi de l'autorisation pour faire possible pour l'année de travail en ce pays. Mais façon de travail ça là pas qu'à prospérer à quoi c'est le réseau gouvernement qui a encouragé l'établissement business qu'on a été le BPO. La terre a changé à présent. Nous pas à vie en même si l'industrie a été avant. Mais ça nous a été à présent. C'est dat même ces buildings qui étaient là, qui ont trouvé qu'ils ont converti à différentes manières et qui ont servi pour ça nous couiller un IT call center. So, ça nous a été à c'est dat le gouvernement n'a pas juste parlé de vie vieux mais nous avons délivré la vie fort. Parce que, en temps passé, ce travail a été unique à ouvert en ligne de castre. Là, vous regardez ça um, qui a fait ici à Jordia. Manière de faire un louche travail pour convaincre la factory. Ça, ça c'est pas trop, ça nous a créé free zone. Le ministre a dit que le développement est un effort qui est en place pour le gouvernement placer un fédéral de neuf habitations business en vieux fort et quand même du temps pour ces petites villes vieux fort. Là, nous entrons en gouvernement, Free Zone est presque vide, la patine est presque vide, la patine est Mais ça nous a fait là à présent. Ce n'est pas juste des marchandises que nous avons mené ici pour mettre en ces warehouse là like, dans pour marchandises là quitter et vie aller mais nous ca créer travail gouvernement s'est laissé j'appuie une décision critiquement pour réviser et réétablir marketing board s'est laissé qui ca porter nom à Saint Louis Marketing Entity ça c'est nous qui a présent il y en a c'est plus fort initiative facilité nous voir c'est pour faciliter exportation et que c'est pour faire assurer qui la ne façon les cultivateurs, ça c'est les pharma, n'ont pas meilleure façon de production avec la place pour produire en cette ci aussi régionalement et international. Secrétaire permanent ministre de l'Agriculture, coopératif, la pêche, etc. Barry Mofélicien dit qu'il est très important pour le marketing board d'opérer effectivement pour entretenir et embrasser demande les produits de la pharma pays. Selon M. Félicien, Marketing Board là ni pour continuer à opérer à dégoué une institution qui est fort pour sa un bon service pour les femmes. Il y a ajouté que là ni une place spéciale pour assembler, nettoyer, sanitiser, pour pack et distribuer tous ces produits sortis de Marketing Board. Place de ça là, il y a l'homme Park House qui est un dégoué international pour protection de sa monde qui a mangé et qui depuis sa venue en place, le pays a commencé à faire le marketing board là, qui est vendu pour produits ni en région et aussi en pays international. Tout ce qui est là, c'est le commitment du gouvernement pour supporter et assister les femmes à cette liste. Et ce qui est notre nouvelle là, je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous conservez la vie, vous allez présenter une autre nouvelle à Kouyol. À présent, je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine et que vous allez vous présenter au général. Merci, Apel Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.